So let's go to that problem of the day and see what's happening there. It's a long one, my friends. Alice is training for an upcoming 26.2 mile marathon. And that's the traditional marathon length. That's a lot of miles, my friends. It's a lot. We think of it 26 miles, but it's got a little tag, about two tenths on the end of it. She runs a 10K race, which is, by the way, 6.2 or 6 and 2 tenths miles in 40 minutes. That's a good pace. That's a really good pace. It says, at that pace, how long would it take her to run the marathon? Now, I'll say this. Probably unlikely she would keep that pace going if she's going there. She's kind of wear down or, or pace herself a little bit differently. No pun intended, of course. But in this case, we're talking two set distances. 26.2 miles or 26 and 2 tenths as we like to call it. Miles. Ooh, we'll get it there. And the other one, 6 and 2 tenths miles. So let's take a look at this. We're in minutes. And many times when we get to bigger periods of time, we like to make it go to hours and minutes We'll check that out both ways when we get to the final answer, okay? So in the meantime, the question is, what would we do? The key thing is we're going to let her keep the same rate or the same pace. So it's almost like a, not almost like, it's a proportional sounding thing to me. So let's set it up with a proportion going on here. And I'm going to go basically distance and time because that's what the rate is about. So we're going to put the distance, the time, and another distance, let's call it distance one, distance two, and we'll put time two, okay, and time one. Those are the information pieces we've got. We're looking for a second amount of time, the way I'm seeing this. So those of you folks who like to run and do those things, again, this is all about keeping the same pace. As you well know, a lot of times you've got at least an average idea of how long it's going to take you to run a certain race and things like that. So hopefully this may give you some insight to what you can do to figure out what your time is going to be. Just keep in mind, oh yes, just keep in mind that uh, long race, you have to pace yourself and you probably will not be doing quite the same fast pace that you're doing on a 10K race. But let's check it out anyway, all right? See what happens. 40 minutes is pretty good. I will have to say, that really sounds good. Let's take a look at these numbers. Let's put them in place. Our first distance we know is, we, we know is the 10K race, all right? And we'll use miles there, which is going to be 6 and 2 tenths. Our distance, no, that's not the time. Let me do that again, folks. I am sorry. That's going to give us, we'll be right over here. here. Uh, put our distance on top. And our time is, I'm going to use 40. I'm going to use it in minutes. We'll change back to hours and minutes here in just a second. Over here on this other side, we're looking for what happens when we run a marathon. And again, we're in miles. We're in miles, so we keep those basically the same story. And this is going to be, I'm going to call it M, because it's a number of minutes. So in this case, we got M equaling our number of minutes. And we'll change that, for those of you who are like me, like to hear hours and minutes to kind of give a better idea of what that really entails. Now, this is going to be a pretty large number, I believe. Let us play with this a little bit. And in setting it up, as we said, it's proportional. So we're going to work the cross multiplication game here. We're going to take our 6 and 2 tenths and multiply it times our M, number of minutes. And over here, we've got this 40 multiplying into 26 and 2 tenths. And I'm going to be very honest with you. On this one, we're, yeah, well, there we go. We need to drop our, our situation out. I am going to go to the calculator here in just a second, all right? Because those numbers are getting pretty crazy. So we got 6 and 2 tenths times the M. And the other side, we are going to say that equals to 40 times 26 and 2 tenths. I'm going to multiply. So let's go to the calculator and do a little work on that. That's why we have calculators, right? At home, you all may do the same thing. I've got 26 and 2 tenths. And we multiply that by 40. And that is going to give me 1,048. Now, that really doesn't have much meaning there. But I do know what we're going to do now. Take a look back to it. Let's go back to the equation just a second. We are going to, now we've got this 1,048 working for us here. We're going to divide that 6 and 2 tenths into 1,048 and see where it leads us. Remember what M stands for? Number of minutes. That should take us right to the number of minutes. So I'm going to put a 6.2. I'm almost off my page there, almost off y'all's screen. Let's kick it right over here and see what's going to happen. So back to the calculator. Let's take it and see what we get. 
It would take a long time if we were to divide by 6.2 by long division. And yes, I'm not poo-pooing long division, but on problems like this, that's why we use calculator. Notice I just pressed divided by and it brought me back to 1048. So don't get concerned there. But we are going to divide that by 6 and 2 tenths, which is going to kick us into gear with about 169 and a little chump change there. Wow, what did it say? 169 point something, we'll say about 0 0.03, 0 0.3 hundredths, and that's our little round off moment. That's the number of minutes we're looking at. So basically, it's 169 minutes plus a few seconds maybe, um, three hundredths of a minute. So there you go. That's what we've got so far. You say, well, Ernie, what does that mean? Let's take it back to the calculator one more time. We're just going back and forth, making the director work hard today up there. Let's divide that by 60. Why don't we divide by 60? Because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And I want to get that down to hours and minutes. So it looks like I have now my time, and I'm just going to call it time, is looking to be two hours. And uh-oh, how many minutes? Question mark there. So how many we got left over? We're in decimal form, aren't we? So let's take that decimal part, one more exercise on the calculator, let's take that decimal part, which is 0 0.8172043. Good night, keeps going on and on. Let's just go ahead and transpose that right back in there. And we're going to multiply that back by 60, and we're going to see how many minutes we've got. So we've got, we're not going to take the 2 with it. We already know what that's going to do. It's going to take us right back to 169 if I do that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little, uh, I wonder if I can do that. Well, let's go ahead and write it in there. I was going to say, I would just take the answer and subtract by 2 and then multiply by 60. Probably would have been a lot smarter. But I'm not on my smart pills today, it looks like. So let's take it a long way. We are going to take the decimal part and multiply it by 60 to see what we can get to in terms of the minutes. There we go. 301. Oh, we could also play on long division and done a little bit of an arithmetic situation and see how much we have remaining, but we'll, we'll play this out. Multiply this times 60. We're going to transform it back to minutes. And there we have it. It looks like it's about two hours and close to 49 minutes. And again, that little 0.03 business is back there. So roughly that's what we're thinking about, plus a few seconds latched on there. So Alice, there you go. Train hard. That's a lot of time to be out there running. And again, that's if you keep that strong pace going there.